Hey everybody, welcome to class. Thank you for getting organized. I'll get organized myself and then we'll start. So you already have your rollers down the midline of your mat. And then you're sitting, you've sat down at the very front edge of it. I'm saying this for the people maybe watching this on the YouTube channel. And you pull your tail forward, your feet are grounded about four inches apart. And while you are here laying on your back, you can also feel that you're grounding through your heels. The ball of the big toe keep each other on your foot. So it's a nice solid connection here into the ground. And then when you roll on back, just assure that your tailbone is grounded on the roller. Your head is also supported here on the roller. And there should be a little arch at the neck and also at the waistline. The natural curves of your spine are still maintained here on the roller. Now open the arms out to the side with the palms up. Really stretch your fingers to the side walls. And let your scapula, your shoulder blades, sink down around the curve of the roller. And I know the people that were here were already rocking a little bit from side to side. So you shift your weight, lift hip, lift armpit, and then right hip, right armpit. If you can, move the back of your hands to the floor, do a big stretch across your chest, across the top of the shoulders, and your pecs. And you put that shift in your weight as you rock from side to side. But we're really looking for that massage between the shoulder blades and a feeling of chest opening here. Since it tends to be a culture of um, force against us in this respect, a lot of us come in slightly slumped forward, chest tight and constricted, much constricted breathing, by the way, which is an issue. And maybe some little tension here in the low back. So as you walk from side to side, feel that massage into the sacrum. That big triangular bone near the base of your spine. So we come back to center, we come up at the ceiling, self gaze, stop the side to side movement, and just feel the weight of your body draping around the roller. Inhale now, we curve the arms off the ground, there's a little flexion at the wrist, at the elbow, and then at the shoulder. Embrace the air above you like you're hugging someone you love. And then exhale, pull the arms open slowly, with the dragging the space apart between the fingertips. And then once the hands rest on the ground or get as close to as possible, we lift again. Inhale for the arms to lift and embrace. Exhale to pull the arms open, really wrap your legs around the roller underneath you. And then when you lift the arms, feel that your chest will narrow a little bit. That's okay in this case, right? So I'm going to stay there. And then we exhale to pull the arms open to pull the chest wide. Now the shoulder blades are moving too, right? As you lift the arms, the blades move sideways away from your spine, away from the roller, and they curve up around the edges, the outside edges of your ribs. And then feel how the shoulder blades come underneath you as you open your arms. The blades are going to sink down and then come in towards the spine and hug the roller beneath your body. We do that again, inhaling all the way up. So it's a deep, full inhale, and then a long, slow exhale to bring the arms all the way down. Try to end the movement at the end of the exhalation. And let's just do one more. Inhale, the whole body expands. You want to feel the lungs fill, the ribs expand, the belly expands. And then exhale, let your navel sink down and towards your spine as you engage the abdominal wall. And then the chest also starts to fit together. The ribs close around your center. Next, lift the arms up and then point the fingers to the ceiling. So now the arms are parallel, the width of your chest. Fingers reach directly for the sky. Stabilize through your feet, hug the ball of using it to find a little bit more balance here. And then inhale, we're going to lift the arms up, let the shoulder blades come up away from the roller. And exhale, pull the blades down as you lower the arms. The blades melt towards the ground without force, without tension, just like a piece down. Now inhale, we'll lift again, shrug up. And then exhale, side the air out. And as you breathe out, so the navel sink down, down, down towards your spine, towards the lower, towards the ground, and we lift again. The whole body expands on the inhale as we lift the arms up, and then the whole body moves together on the exhale, coming in towards your central axis. Do this again. Also, if you have the ball squeeze it, you might be able to fill that central axis. And that's a good thing because you can then sort of line it up with the center of your roller to help you find your balance find your alignment here of something that wants to move. So we lift one more time, show the shoulders up as high as they'll go, following the finger to the sky, and then exhale, widen the collarbones, widen the chest, the shoulder blades melt down beneath you, so embrace the roller beneath your body. From here, turn the palms forward, 
and we're going to inhale and we're going to arch that right here. Keep the abdominal wall engaged. There's no additional lift of the ribs. And just sort of feel that stretch. We feel butt back inside, and now reverse. Inhale, we lift the arms to 90 degrees, and then exhale all the way long down by your side. Reach the fingers to the floor, the edge of the mat by your feet, and then we lift the arms again. The knees sit in parallel. Continue to 90 degrees. Exhale. Imagine the shoulder blades sliding towards your waist as you arch the back, so you're not creating like a lot of shoulder and neck tension. You want to lift the arms and again feel the weight of the blades sink to the ground, and then exhale as you reach the arms forward. Think of the blades moving towards your waist, moving towards your feet. Lifting the arms again, heavy scapula and the shoulder blades. Exhale, let the blades slide towards your waist as the arms go back. That allows you to have sort of a valley on either side of. Your neck here, right? You don't want to put your shorter neck, you want to keep it long. Bring the arms forward and then exhale, press the arms to the air. The whole time we're moving, imagine that you move the water so you feel both the support and the resistance of the air around you. And you're aware of the weight of your arms as you move them through the air, the weight of your body as you rest on the wall. As you burst, the arms lift to the sky and then exhale all the way forward and down. Very nice. Now bring your hands to your shoulders, elbows bend, and are off the mat. We pull the elbows in close to the waist and then scoop them up to the ceiling. Exhale all the way out, around, down, and the center. So you're drawing circles in the air with each of your elbows. The arms move in your images, one to the other. One circle for breath. So you start your side, lifting on the inhale, and then a longer exhale, out, around, down, back in, and center. And then lift again. You can move the arm bones here on the joint surface. You can also move the shoulder blades under your ribs on top of the roller to get a lot of mobility here into that upper back and a lot of stretch and release into your neck. So you can feel that. And also maybe notice every angle that you take the arm out, the elbow out to the side, you're getting a different stretch in the pectoralis muscles. You can feel the chest open and stretch in different diagonals radiating from the center of your sternum. Let's reverse. The elbows go down and wide, bring them back, lift them forward, up, around, and in. If it's nice and juicy, you want to really feel this massage underneath you onto the roller. And the breath should be calming the nervous system down and deep. Inhale, and then a longer, slower exhale. Also relax the nervous system, no matter what else is going on. Breathe in completely and exhale completely. We'll do one more like this. Doing the circles like this with the arms bent reduces the load so that you can warm up the joint surface before we go to full arm circles, which we're doing next. So you extend the arms like them and out at your side, palms to the floor, and maybe touch the fingertips to the mat. Stretch long and then lift the arms up and all the way back by your ears on the inhale. Then as you exhale, sweep the arms wide. Palms to the ceiling until the arms come down parallel to your roller. Turn the palms down. It's a big inhale up and down by the ears. And then exhale to find your wingspan here at your side. Even stretch the fingers open, stretch the palm open. At the end of the movement, rotate the arm to turn the palms down. You reach up and then back. Yawn your body open to the side of you. And then exhale. Reach out for the side walls. Take up as much space in the room as you can. Now we're going to reverse. So palms up and you circle wide out and then back. As the arms pass the head of the shoulders, lift them a little bit to keep the ribs rounded. Exhale, push the air down with your arms and out with your lungs at the same time. So palms up, circle and stretch. The arms lengthen back, they lift a little bit, and then you can push them forward and down. Pushing the air into the ground from active neck. We take the arms open. Stretch wide, reach back. Notice how the arm muscles are stretching in different aspects as you move the arm in different positions from your shoulder. And we'll do one last one here. Reach back, stretch open, exhale, dive the arms forward and down. Good. Hopefully that felt wonderful, right? So we're going to slide up to the side. If you have a ball between your legs, take it out and place it to the side. And then you can slide off of the roller. Just leave it your side for a second, lay in the back, and feel that connection where your body is connected to the floor and where it floats up. 
it still should be floating up at your waist. So that if you took your hands to your pelvic girdle, you could feel the hip bone crest. And then also the pubic bones would be in that same plane so that your pelvis would be flat and feel like a tabletop on the back. If you wanted to go into a pelvic tuck, you would pull your waist down and the tail would curl up. You feel a little pressure of the low back sinking into the floor and the tail is pointed up the wall towards the ceiling. And then you can tip the tail down again Drop here to that neutral position with the pelvis. Flat here, parallel to the ground. And let's do that again. Now, what might help you if this is confusing? Because it is, if you're not used to this kind of terminology. Feel for those two little hip bone crests, right? On your hips and take your thumbs on each one. Right thumb on right hip bone crest, left thumb on left hip bone crest. And then take your index finger, middle finger on the pubic bones here. And when the, all of those bones, all those three bones are in the same plane, that's a neutral pelvis. If you pull your waist down into the mat, you'll feel the pubic bone lift. Fingers are higher than the thumbs. That's a tuck or a posterior tilt of the pelvis. If you lower back to neutral and then keep lowering the tailbone and lifting the waist up, that's an arch. Now you'll feel the thumbs of the hip bone press are higher than the pubic bone here. So this rocking of the pelvis, this mobility in the low spine, we're going from one to the other. So you're going to lower the tail and arch the back. The ribs will spread and lift. And then pull the ribs together, press your waist up to the floor. You'll shift the weight on the sacrum so it's now higher up. The weight on your sacrum is closer to your waistline. And then when you move into the arch, lowering the tail and lifting the waistline, arching the spine, you'll feel more of a little stretch in the abs here. And then we engage the abs to run back again. Pelvic girdle tips on the fevers, the thigh bones, and then bring it back to neutral. All right. So from here, that should make your back feel a little bit more relaxed. Yes. And we're going to press on your feet, lift the hips up in the air into a little bit of a bridge, and then slide the roller across your mat under that sacrum. You feel that like triangular bone resting on center of the roller. And then from here, pull your right knee into your chest. Exhale, pull the left leg in. Place it together and then extend the legs up to the ceiling. Straighten the knees, lift here. Good. And then we're going to bring the right leg back by your chest, the left leg forward into space, into a split. This is called a scissor split. And then we switch the legs. Legs stay about four inches apart. You'll see that as it pass in midair. Bring the left leg back, a little stretch in the back of the leg in your next leg, and the right leg forward, and then switch again. Soft plank through your feet, not overly pointing. You don't want to be in the position where you feel like you're cramping your toes. And then inhale, switch again. We take an in breath for one movement and exhale for the next one. Get that leg. The back of the legs, the leg is back over your shoulder, and then the leg through the quad and the top of the hip as the leg reaches out long across the space here. Now, if you feel like it's too much arch in the back, maybe the roller needs to move, probably a little bit more to the detail, and it feels great. Just keep doing this. All right, we're bringing the legs up to the ceiling and externally rotating. So the heels are together, the knees point out on the diagonal. And now we pull the legs apart, inhale to open the feet. Take a stretch of the inner thighs. Exhale, lift the legs, closing the inner thigh muscles. Right, pull them together, the heels touch, and then pull both legs apart again. So ideally the legs are kind of vertical when they're up here. If you need to bend your knees a little bit to have that be true, go ahead and do that. If your hamstrings are really tight, you might need a softening of the knees, a slight bend down. Exhale and pull the legs together. Use your upper inner thighs to close. And then as you open them, allow gravity to help you sink the legs out and down towards the ground. One more time, exhale all the way to the top. Now we're doing a one-legged version. Move the left leg in the air, take the right leg out to the side. Try not to tip the pelvis. Put more weight into that left hip as the right leg goes out. Exhale, drag it on up, bring the legs closed. And now leave the right leg vertical, the left leg is out to the side. 
hold the right side of your baby, press the right arm into the roller, exhale, and drag it on up. We're trying to avoid tipping the hips from one side to the other with the weight of the leg leaving the weight of the center. So you should be able to feel more work into your abdominal wall well to help keep the pelvis rounded here and not let it rotate as it goes out to the side. Exhale to lift. Now from here, we're just going to bend the knees and then exhale, lower the feet to the ground. If you feel like the roller needs to adjust, move it slightly and now slide your right leg forward, hip extension, head is down. And then if it's too much extension across your hip, if you feel it too much of an arch in the back, bend your knee a little bit to soften that stretch. But if you, if you love it and it feels good, take the right arm back by your heel. And we're just opening up the whole right front line of your body here with the right arm reaches back, back of the hand on the ground, right leg reaches forward, heel rest. The leg might be in a slight external rotation as you extend it. And just breathe here. Inhale to think of lengthening away from the hip bone crest at the top of the, of the structure. And exhale to let the back of your body sink towards the ground, relaxing and melting towards the floor. We do that again, deep breath in. Open it up, exhale softly, slowly. Gradually let the air escape the lungs, escape your lips. One more breath. Hopefully feeling a little more ease in that right leg. And then let's bring the right arm back to the roller. Hold it in position, slide the right foot back. And now extend the left leg forward. The two sides could be really different. So again, you need to bend the knee a little bit to ease the stretch across the hip. So I guess that's where we are when we start. Right, you want to honor what your body's telling you and work with it, not against it. Here we go. And then if you want, you take the left arm back. Back of the head to the ground. And just feel that stretch the whole left front of your body here as you're arched over the lifted roller. Now, at home, if you don't have a roller, you can use a book or you have a block underneath your hips. Just a couple more breaths. You might feel a little bit of stretch in the muscles here, and then a little release. Keep focusing on your breath to find that deep release and relaxation in your body and your nervous system. Just going to do one more breath here. Long inhale, and then even longer exhale. And then let's bring the arm back, those legs forward. So this is more, more load onto the back. So if you need to bend your knees again, do that until the back is comfortable. You still feel the stretch across the front of your hips. And then if it works for you, go down to the back as well. If it seems like too much, certainly one leg can be pulled in. Work, for what works, work with what works for you, right? All right, and now we can bring the hands back to the roller, slide the feet back in. And then as you press in your feet, lift your hips up and slide the roller out from under your feet. Lower the spine. And we're coming up to sitting by pulling first the right knee into your chest, hands behind the right, foot hands behind the right thigh. Pull the left knee into your chest, lift the leg up, and then roll forward and up to sit on all the way. You know, exhale. Good. Right? You just did it without tripping your spine and you got to use your core. Excellent. So we're rolling back into your upper upper curl for hundreds. What this means is your heels will be grounded and you can take your hands behind your legs here. Start with that pelvic top. You pull the waist back and you go back towards your sacrum, you're behind your sit bone. Gradually work back here across the glutes, down over the sacrum, down to the hips, down to the waist, stop at the tip of the blades. This is your upper arm curl. Let's dig the heels into the ground and come up. So lift your head, jump fully forward. You can press into your legs here to come on up. Yeah. Thanks, Joanne. Yeah. If that's hard for you, use the band to help you with this. And then you can dig the heels down and begin again with that pelvic tuck. Or the tail up 
And then you're going all the way down to the shoulder. Release your body back. You're using a band to help you choke up on the band so it has more support. We're really down here. And then once you're down in the upper curl, here you can pull the right leg in, hold on to the back of the leg, pull the left leg in, squeeze the legs together, you can lift the feet up towards the ceiling or keep them back, extend the arms forward and start pumping the arms. Inhale, right feet here, exhale in again. Breathe in completely, exhale it out. Okay, just continue with that. So, um, Debbie, is it Debbie? Yeah. So you're, this is your first time in class. So what I want you to do is just using the band, pull back and go down until you can get like the bra line on the tip of the blades there. And then you can hold the band and just move the arms up and down like this. And that will give you some work. So right here. Good. Now don't look up at the ceiling. If you're doing the hundreds, look down at your belly. And then everyone can pull their knees in and rest on down. Good. That's good. And even if you stop there, right, you still feel that work in your abs, and then you pump up and down like so. I know, I know. So you don't have to do it for long, and then you come back up. This is like a gradual process. All right. So from here, roll up. So I think what is going to help you if um, if it's, it's hard for you to keep your legs down, we do have ankle weights. Does anyone else want to make this up? This should make this should make it. Okay. And So for the roll-up, it's going to save your first time doing this, which is the bare band. So you can take the band around the ball and put in the arch. You can check up on the band a little bit and sit up to fall. Maybe you can have to take the knees or back. And then eventually you'll stay in the legs. Yep. And now we're starting the same way with that pelvic top. So pull the tail up and roll the low back down. Press out through your feet. You're placing your spine down one vertebra at a time. Gently, gradually go on down. Yes, good, good. So you're not falling, you're working your way to the floor. Come all the way down and lift coming up. So you lift the head, shift the chest, look down your midline. Pull the elbows out and back a little bit. Help you lift and come up. Exhale to the hardest part. Actually, before you get to the hard part, it's useful, but you don't know until you've done it once, right? And then dive over and then stack your spine bottom to top of your zipping your back on the wall. So the tall perch on your sits bones, lift the heart, look at the horizon. Is it good? And now we start with the pelvic curl, and round the belly back, start to tip the pelvis, going down slowly, press out along with your legs, flow to the ground, reach it out here, take it all the way down, the little length in your whole body, lower to tail, to heels, and then lift, shift to chest, pick up the head and the neck, exhale, pick up the shoulders, the ribs, dive over. You can take a deep stretch forward, bend your knees if you need to. And then as long as you still feel the stretch in the hamstrings and then you're unfurling the bottom, you're stacking the spine bottom to top. Good, continue that way if that is what you need to be. Otherwise, arms can be free and you can go down. The higher the arms are, the more difficult, the lower the arms are, the more control you'll find. Lengthen out for the legs. Bring yourself to the floor, reach out long behind you. Let's lift again, bring the arms forward and up. Pick up the head, exhale to pick up the heaviest part of the body, the ribs here, and then diving over and down. Suck your waist back, take a C curve with your spine as you dive your head down low. And then we're lifting the body, the back muscles pick up your spine one vertebra at a time. And we're doing it again. So let's roll it back here slowly, curve your way down. Like it out through your arms, like it out through your legs, stretch your spine all the way around your mat. And we'll take the arms back if your arms are free. Start to bring them forward, weight in the scapula, lifting up. So you can figure out what your body needs and what it can do, right? By adjusting the load away from center or using all the great toys that we have, all the great accessories that we have. Set the spine come up. And we are going to go down and do your single leg circles next. 
So we want the fair head near your side. And we can bring ourselves all the way down, roll it back. Then just by curve it, you want to try to get every vertebral inch by inch into the mat here. Come down, and then we'll take the band around your right foot. So pull it in, give your upper up curl. Bend is around the ball of the foot and the arch, and then you lift that leg up to the ceiling. Then you pick up your head and just tuck it through a straight line with no sternum, navel, pubic bone. There we go. And then bring the leg up as high as possible to get some stretch in the back of the leg. Mm -hmm. Self point with the foot. You're not over pointing the toes. Now, here, elbows slide forward so the shoulders are relaxed, and we can get a circle. Goal is to keep the hips rounded. So inhale, bring the right leg over to the left. Exhale, bring it down low. You pull it out to the right, holding the left side heavy, and lift the leg up to the ceiling with the stretch you want in the back of your leg. So inhale, as you cross it over, there's a little internal rotation to feel the stretch in the outer hip. Exhale, bring it down low, the toes point to the ceiling. Then as you go out to the side, the toes and the knees point out on the diagonal, come up to the top of the toes, pointing towards your face. Do it again, short inhale as you begin the circle and a long exhale. The elbows are grounded, head should be down, right? So be sure you're not overstraining the neck. Reach here and then circle around, out to the side, up to the sky, and one more. The shorter the inhale, the longer the exhale, the more you're gonna feel the abdominal contraction at the end of the movement, at the top of the movement, at the end of the breath. And we look for that, right? Because we're working the lowest abdominals, the transversus. Now let's reverse, out to the side, to the right, and then forward and around. The leg circles in the air and the thigh bone circles on the hip socket. So reach and push out into the space around you. Imagine that with every circle, you're going a little bit further out into the air around you. To the circle, you gradually get larger as long as you can keep the pelvis grounded here, the body stable and steady on the mat. So it's not just about the stretch, it's also about the stability, the ability to work your core against the weight of the foot of your leg. So the left side is heavy before the right leg is right, and then the right side sinks into the ground before the right leg pulls to the left. Let's take it to the top here, and now take your stretch. So both ends of the band will go in your right hand. You can check up on the band a bit, and as you actually rotate the leg, take it out to the right without tipping the left pelvis off the floor. And then rock the leg a little bit towards your shoulder in a way. Here, the knee could be a little bit bent if that's easier for you. Okay. Legs are heavy, or you probably know this. And then exhale, pull the leg up to the ceiling. Good, we switch hands now. The left hand holds the strap. And then you can extend the right arm out of the side. Bring, so the right arm out of the side, bring the right leg across the body and rotate the legs so that the knee and the toes point to the floor. You guys look good, right? So the goal here would be to keep the chest parallel to the ceiling and the hips working to be parallel to the wall. That would be a lot of rotation of your spine. Exhale, we're gonna pull the hip down in order to lift the leg up. And then give that leg a little pull back towards your shoulder, back towards your face. Bend the knee if necessary. Feel the stretch in the middle of the hamstring, not at the knee, behind the knee, or at the sixth bone. And then we can pull the knee into your chest and brace it in. Put it as tight as you can. If knees are an issue, hold onto the back of the thigh and sit the shin. And then let's just release that leg forward, stretch it out. Shake out both legs and then let those relax and lengthen in front of you. Feel the difference right and left side. Yeah? So the right leg probably feels longer. It's a little more relaxed into the ground. Maybe we're energized. All right, we're getting ready to do the left leg. So you can come up to put that on. You can, or you can just lift your head and chest. Wrap the hands around your foot. And lift it up. Bring the toes are free outside the bed. And we keep both legs in their own plane, right? So they're parallel to each other. Even though one is vertical, one is along the ground, horizontal. So just lift the leg, get a little stretch in the hamstring here, and go down to your six foot. And then we do a soft point with the foot. We start the circles. Again, remember the hips stay grounded. Bring the left leg across to the right. Feel that stretch in the outer hip along the IT band. 
into the glute, and then all the way out to the left, we'll leave the right side heavy on the floor. Reach again, and exhale, circle and press the leg into the band. Really took up on the band, so the band gives you support for the mobility of your leg. You want to feel support, but also some resistance as you push out into the band surface. And then the left hip is heavy as the leg moves to the right. The right hip is grounded and pressing back into the floor as you move the leg to the left. You circle again, go the biggest circle you can without flipping the pelvis on and off the mat here. Keep it glued to the floor like the whole pelvic girl is filled with wet sand or concrete. All right, we're going to come to the top and now we reverse the circles. The left leg moves out to the left, the right side is sinking into the ground. You want to imagine here that as the leg moves to the left, the whole right side of the body is pressing into the floor like it's glued with gorilla glue to, the, to your mat. And then maybe even think that you're letting the right side of the body fall into a ditch here and then the leg sweeps away from it. Then the left side falls into the ditch and the leg moves over to the right. Keep your breath going. Short deep inhale, long slow exhale. And let's do one more here. You want to take the leg externally to take it to the side, internally to cross it over the other way. It's neutral at the top and bottom of the movement. And now we're taking the bend of the band into your left hand. Elbow grounded, open the left leg out to the left, hold the right side heavy. You might want to put your right hand on your right hip bone just to be sure you're not cheating the movement at all, right? It's not about how well you get the leg, it's how much you feel the stretch, and you'll actually get more stretch if you keep the other side of the pelvis down. And then rock the leg a little bit towards your shoulder and away. That knee can be slightly bent, and you'll still get a benefit from this, right? And then exhale to pull the leg up to the sky, switch hands, cross it over, the left arm extends, and now we get the big twist here. Lifting the hip and rotating the leg internally to increase the stretch up into the sacral area. Then we'll pull the down with the leg up, pull it back one more time. And pull the knee into your chest, the leg comes off. And we want to stretch that left leg down next to the right one. Shake them out. You might notice you have more external rotation with the legs. That's a sign of releasing tension here in the hip. All right, so let's pull the left knee into your chest, lift the right leg up to the ceiling, lift the head, neck, and shoulders. Exhale, rock forward and up to sitting. It's good, rolling like a ball. So we want to sit in the front third of the mat. It can be helpful to take your ball between your thighs and press in. And then, easy as the first time if you have your hands behind your thighs, as you advance, your hands over the shins. You want to be in that pelvic top so you can pull the tail off and around the low back. And then also bend here at the chest to bring your face down into your belly. Now we're going to take the whole shape back just to the shoulders and come right back up to this position. Inhale, you lift the tail over the scapula, the shoulder blades. Exhale, come up onto your balance point. Yeah, I know. Pretend you're five years old. Go back and then come forward. All right, see? So the trick is to really bend your spine enough. Right? And then use your breath. Inhale to roll. Exhale, come up. And really, if you think about the inhale, also inflating your spine so it's broader, like you just fill the tire with air, that's going to be helpful. So you press the ball, you press the edges of your feet together, you lift the tail, go back, exhale, come up. And if you're having trouble coming up, take your hands here and then the legs will kick forward to bring you all the way up. So, like if I was, if I got stuck a little bit, I would go forward and that would bring me all the way up to my balance. All right, then we put that aside. Good job. And if it didn't feel comfortable in your back, next time you throw padding, right? If it felt okay, that's good. You try to get enough padding these mats. So for the ab series, we take the right hand to the right ankle, left hand to the right knee. You're gonna pick up the leg, roll back into your upper ab curl. Elbows go wide, pull the leg close to your body. Now inhale, we switch the legs, left hand to left ankle. Keep your gaze down your midline. I'm looking to the side to check you guys out, right? And then the leg shoots out of the socket and then back in. If it's too much for your neck, you can lay your head down, but then the legs go higher, right? So that you feel it in your abs, but you don't overwork your back. But eventually it's done. 
in the upper arm curl. You can also do a variation where you hold your hands behind your head and move the legs back and forth. Right, so there's lots of different ways to get the work. We're going to put both knees in and then we'll forward it up to sitting. Roll the shoulders a couple of times. <coughs> when you first start Pilates, the neck is usually the thing that you can do the most or that we're most aware of, right? And even if you've been doing it for like decades, you still will go like, huh, right? I'm still working it. But that's okay. The more you get it into your abs, the more it's going to be, and the more you work into your neck muscles, the more relaxed you'll be, right? It's just, it's a little, um, it's a little aggravating at first and sometimes even a little scary. If you're not used to playing these muscles before. But um, take rest when you need them. And this is a gradual process, right? So now we're rolling back for the double leg stretch. This is the second in the abs series. So we begin again with that pelvic tuck. Throw yourself back to your upper right curl. And then you fold your knees in, hands rest on your shins, legs are zipped together like a unit. Look at your look at your belly, look at your midline. Now the arms and legs lift to the ceiling. Fingers and toes, excess to circle the arms, embrace the legs in. And we do that again to reach and exhale and pull yourself into a little ball. As you advance this exercise, the legs go lower, the arms go back, but you don't change your spinal position. If you don't want to flatten your back into the ground, because that would show that you're not really working the abs correctly. So it's not about how far you take them, it's about how high you keep your head and how high you stay up off the top of your shoulders. So then you challenge that ability as you work into your practice. So one more, switch everything up, put everything in, rest your head down. I know you're grateful, I am too. And then we take the feet down, Open the arms out to the side and rock your knees from side to side. Turn your head away from your knees. Just get a little release in your back, a little stretch back into your waist. All right. Just stay with the two of the F series today and come up for seated slide stretch. So you can pull, pull the right leg in this time, lift the left leg up, push the legs forward, go forward and up, come up to sitting using your core. Good. Now, if your hips, are tight, if your hamstrings are tight, you may want to sit on a couple of the yoga blocks. And then you'll extend the legs out to the, out a little bit wider than your hips. Sit upright here on your sits bones, sort of like elongate up through the central axis, reach up for your mirror, and the arms flip forward with the footing of water in the pool. Let me press the arms down and lift the chest wide in the collarbones. We look down chin to chest and we bring the back of the head out over and down in the arc to dive forward here. As you go over, you feel that stretch in your spine, bending your knees may give you more mobility. Sitting elevated on a yoga block will also give you more mobility in your spine. Then you press down through your heels to your sit bones and you lift your spine from the bottom to the top. Pull yourself all the way up, sit up tall. And then let's do that again. So look down and around, out, over and down, curve your way down here. Tuck the belly up and down into the spinal curve. You want to think about making a C shape here out of your body and not just the hip hinge like a B, right? And then you're coming up again. So the difference would be like if I reach forward like this, that would be more of the B shape and I'm not getting that sucking back and lifting into my abdominals to stretch out the way back here. So one more, look down and dive out over, curve your body forward here. So well, let's stretch from the reach back to your waist. And then step your back up an imaginary wall, taking so all the way up. Good job. Okay. I think from here, lower the arms. We're going to move into some of the side kicks here. So you lay on your side. And you can prop yourself up. If you want to move the mat so you can see me, it's like this is like a new thing for you. You're welcome to do that right now. Okay, so if this is too much for your neck, extend the arm and lay your head down on it. Maybe have a towel or something here between the ear and the arm. Otherwise, we're propped up like so. Your top hand will press into the mat right by your chest. The bottom elbow pulls slightly in to so get a little engagement into your armpit toward the floor. Then we flex the feet, we lift the top leg, hip, hip bone height, and flex the foot, bring it forward, and pulse one, two. Take it here. Point the foot, reach it back, pulse again. 
Hey, thanks for coming for as long as you could. I totally appreciate it. Reach back. So as you bring the leg forward, reach out and back through your six bony tail, point the foot, swing the leg back, and try to hold yourself balanced here on your side seat. Right? So as the leg goes forward, don't lean back. As the leg goes back, do not lean forward. Use the support of your arms and your core to hold you together. Come back to center and lower the leg. We rotate externally, which means the knee and the toes point up on the top leg. And we point the foot to lift the leg up, flex and bring it down, focus this heel. Drag the space open, exhale, squeeze the space shut. Point to lift, flex and go down. Good, one more, point up. And flex, lengthen out and away. Now reverse, keep the foot flex, lift, point the foot and reach out and down. Flex the rise, point and stretch it longer. One more to go up, point all the way down. Now here, double K, which means that we bend the knee up to the ceiling, we slide the foot in, pull the knee towards the shoulder, the foot to the ceiling, flex the ankle and then reach the foot down. So point and glide. Knee to the shoulder, lift up, flex, and reach out and down. We'll do that once more. Pull, lift, extend, flex, close. Now we reverse it. So keep the foot flex, bring it high, point the foot, bend the knee, knee to the shoulder, tap the turn of the leg, and skate it down. If you're sliding on ice, end in a flex, lift, point, and bend. Toe tap, slide it forward, reach out through the heel. One more to go up, point, and bend and then glide it all the way up and down. Now, big circles, round de jaw. So you bring that leg forward, in parallel, rotate externally, up, out, back, and around through center. The bottom leg presses into the ground. You really press with your arm, help hold yourself in position with your upper body against the movement, the tightness, the weight of your leg. Lift circle out round and behind you. Take your time and really feel this movement of the leg on the socket. Lift up, back, around, and through center. We're going to reverse. Take it back, open the leg, circle forward and around, and then reach back here. Circle up, around, and through center again. And we're doing one more. Reach here, circle all the way down. Okay. From here, let's lay on your stomach for. Um, a version of grasshopper. So we can overlap the hands under your forehead. Or if you prefer, you can take your hands palm up under this hip bone press we were talking about earlier. Legs in external rotation. Now we're going to just press the pelvic girdle into the ground and lift the right leg up. That's it. That's good. And then exhale, bring it down. And then you pick up the left leg. Press the hip bone press into the floor on that left side so you really get the work in the glute and then bring it down. So right leg up. And tail lower. Left leg up here. And bring it down. Good, one more set like this. Lift the right leg. Exhale, bring it down. Try to press the pubic bone into the floor so you lengthen the lower back. Right, so you don't want to be arching the back excessively when you pick up the leg. And now let's lift both legs and turn out and open and close the thighs to clap the legs together. If this is not feeling good for you, go back to the one leg version. It's a slight opening, a slight closing. Be sure you get the, the thighs off the ground. It's not happening from the knees, it's happening from the butt. And then you can lower it down and we can sit back in a child's pose. Push off the floor. If that's hard on your knees, lay on your back and pull your knees into your chest instead. And then stack this one to clean up. Or you're doing the other side. I'm going to turn so I can still see you guys. And you want to lay on your sides. If you ever find that it's not really comfortable on like the, the upper part of the leg, the greater to cancer, you can just like get extra padding to go underneath or hold your mat. Okay, legs forward, flex the feet, pull that bottom elbow in towards you. The top hand presses in front of your chest into the floor. Pick up your top leg, flexing the foot. Inhale, swing it forward. It's the same height as your hip, parallel to the ground, and then point the foot, take it back. Do not lean forward, hold the body steady, reach out and use your glute 
to push the leg back twice. Flex it forward, we pulse one, we pulse two. Point the foot, sweep the leg back, pulse one and two again. Flex it forward here, pulse, pulse. Point, reach it back and lengthen, lengthen. Come back to center and rotate the leg externally. Point to lift the leg up high, flex to bring it down long. Point to lift, flex and lower. Let's do one more, point high, flex all the way down, reverse. Flex to go up, point stretch it out of the way. Flex if you lift, point reach it out, longer still. One more, flex up, point all the way down. Now double peg, bend the knee. Knee to the shoulder, foot to the ceiling, flex, reach out and down. Point and glide it in. Pull the knee to your shoulder, lift up, flex, and press it down here. One more time. Just appreciating how it works all these different muscles in your leg, right? Now tap reverse, flex the foot to lift, point the foot, bend the knee, skate that leg forward all the way, reach out long, flex at the end to lift, point the foot, bend the knee, and then you skim it down the other leg, both legs stretch, flex to lift, point and bend, skate it forward, reach it out. Now the big circles, you bring that leg forward, up, around, back, hold your body steady here on the mat, stay balanced on your sideline. That's not easy, right? You've got this length of your leg reaching forward and back, and you're trying to keep yourself together with your core. Hold yourself balanced here. Yeah, don't let your hip take the leg back for you, keep your hip forward. One more. We're gonna complete the circle and then do it in reverse. So take it back, lift the leg, forward and around, right, and then look ahead so you're not fading your neck. Look straight ahead at the horizon. Maybe you can see your leg out of the corner of your eye, but you feel where it is in space, right? Proprioception, super important. All right, great. So from here, let's come on up to sitting. And we're gonna elevate yourselves up again on the block if you need it, or just sit upright here for soft. So legs go a little wider than the mat. If you know you're tight in the hamstrings, please sit up on something so you have more ability in your spine. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a strain. So we take the arms out to the side and slow through the finger. Try to arch your back a little bit as you sit up. And then we rotate to the right. The left arm goes across the body back. And as you dive over, try to bring your left ear to your right knee and pull your right shoulder behind you so the spine is rotated all the way up to the head. Hold that stretch, feel the length here as you pull one centimeter to the other. Pull yourself up, hold the rotation, unwind, and then we spin to the left. Back of the right hand to the outside of the leg so the palm faces away from you. Twist here a little bit more. Reach the arm up and back behind you, stretch long through your hand. Lift to come up and center, unwind here. So spiral and dive. Lift to come up and center, take it again. Come upright, center here. So everyone lower. I'm gonna ask everyone to get yoga blocks and sit on them so you can feel the, the difference about actually having more mobility in your spine, even if you're a more advanced client. I'm gonna do it too. So probably you may want to, so you have a wider base of support. Okay. Because there's often this hesitation to use the, the props, when really you shouldn't because we're suggesting them because it makes the movement feel better in your body and you get more out of it. So even like my super flexible people have been doing this for decades, right? I'm not giving away anyone's age, I'm just saying. We've been with this a long time, right? And the people who are starting here for the very first time, see if you can feel like you get more mobility in your body if you give yourself a little bit more freedom here. So extend the legs out, stretch out long, right? And then you can even bend the knees if you feel like you're super tight, right? Rotate and then dive over and see how much further you can go, right? But I feel when I do that, it's almost like I've unlocked my spine, right? And you dive and you stretch. Lift to come up. How does that compare? 
right? Am I right? Yes. Is that ever? I'm, I'm usually right at Pilates. <laughs> um, I'm only striking, I'm only doing about 50% right the rest of the time. <laughs> so, okay, over here. Lift to come up. Center, let's do it again. Yeah, I'm not doing all the time on the block. I love this. Yeah, and some of you have been with me a long time. Remember, some of the people have come in, they're so stiff in their body, they have they really need a chair to start to get that mobility that they're looking for. And it will all can it will all continue to open up so that you will end up sitting lower and lower to the ground until you really feel that it's worthwhile to do it that way. Right. So never be afraid to try a prop because for any of us. Using one of these props can often teach you something different about how it feels in the body, and it'll help you no matter how you're doing the exercise later on. Okay, so thank you for humoring me on that. <laughs> and let's see. So here we're going to stand and do a little upper back extension. Good. Like not trip over the lower. And So if you take your hands to your abs, what we want to do is we're trying to lift up above and then what about the upper back backwards. And think about this, it's like you were to the cheek and so it's squeezing from the bottom up. You're going to go up, 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 and then the cheek is falling up and back like so. What you don't want to do when you do extension is push your hips forward and throw your back because this is all compression now in the body. We're trying to open up the front of the leg once it flex forward and then bends forward easily. So start with your hands low under the navel, push the flesh in a little bit, and then slide it up. Now when you get to the base of the ribs, turn your palms up and feel the edge of your hand into the ribcage. Take the ribs up one by one and lift your chest. Then you're taking your hands up to the sternum, Put your hands up above your ridge here in the center of your chest. Then take your hands along the collarbone, pull the elbows out wide, drop the elbows down in, up your heart. You can hang your head back if that feels good, otherwise, limit the extension through your neck. Exhale, and you're zipping it up bottom to top, and come back to center. Does that feel good? Notice how open you are here, it's pretty perfect. Right, do it again. So, hands up to the belly, press in, pull up. Pick up your ribs, edge of the hand here, pick up the ribs one by one, pick up your chest. Hands to your sternum, lift through the collarbones, slide your hips out to the shoulders, elbows drop and pull together, squeeze the blade behind you, heart goes up, and can fall back if that feels good. And then exhale, zip up from the bottom to the top. Yeah. Take another breath, it shouldn't be too deep up. And also notice now, don't you feel like you're standing really tall without any effort at all? It's amazing how much forward flexion we all have in our bodies that we've accumulated over the day, over the days, over the years. But this is a nice easy fix. So one more time, hands to your abs, pull in, pull up. Use your hands to really move the flesh, move the ribs, Move the bony structure, encourage you to fold backwards. Only in the thoracic spine, like a little bra line. And then exhale, release the Yeah. Okay. Yeah, your shoulders. That's really good. You feel this length, like going into extension, it's a lot of length in the front line of your body, and then it's a lot of work closing together. Supporting you in the back line of your body. Now, if you have time, you can just try it on the floor. It's going to be more difficult laying horizontally on the ground because gravity is going to pull on us. But you want the same kind of feeling of going forward and up in the chest and then the upper back one falls. So you lay down. So lay that long. And extend the arms out over the roller. If you're tight in the chest, you may want to keep the arms a little bit wider here. And then lower your head down so your ears are between your arms. 
but your head is floating off the ground, right? So the roll is about halfway between your wrist and your elbow. Now pull the head forward, the chest forward, and start pulling the blades down your back to lift the upper body up and see if you can feel that stretch in the abdominal wall. And the low back is still relaxed. And then if someone took the volleyball and holds it up your quadriceco, up to your rib cage, you lower it down here. Or like someone took a roll in pen and went from your tail all the way up your spine, let the head support the air hanging. Do it one more time. So pull forward with the head of the chest, pull those collarbones wide, pull the face down your back, lift up and feel that upper back foot, right? Feel the stretch in your abs all the way down to the pubic bone and then release it all down. Perfect. And then you can sit back in a child's pose. Round your back, push out, and then down. And then you stack your sweat on the top. Okay. And we're good for today. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, you people, for trying something new. Thank you, my regulars, for adapting to the new tech class. For allowing the beginners to be beginners. <laughs> yes. And then also exploring your own foundations is always a good thing, too. So hope to see you all back here. And then also remember the YouTube videos on for Swapo wellness and recreation.